Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are gonna be going over fetching data with the use effect hook. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and create a state. So we're just gonna come up here and we're gonna need to pull out the use state hook. And since we're already here already, let's go ahead and pull out the use effect hook. Next, we'll just come down here and we'll declare a state called data. And let's go ahead and initialize this to an empty array. So what we've been doing so far is basically hard coding the data. So we'll just pass an array of data like this. But let's say I don't have this data hard coded what I need to do is go out and fetch this data. So for now, we'll just leave it as an empty array. So next, let's actually fetch the data. So what we can do is use the use effect hook. The use effect hook is gonna take in two arguments. The first argument is gonna be a function. And the second argument is gonna be something called a dependency array. All right, so let's go over what these two things do, okay? So this function is going to get invoked after the initial render. So once our app component loads, this function will then get invoked basically. So this is where we're gonna fetch our data. In other words, the second argument, the dependency array is basically a listener for when to re-invoke this function. So right now we're passing an empty array because we're not listening for any values to change in order to invoke this function. We only want this function to get invoked once. So that's why we pass it an empty array. But let's say, for example, we were receiving props from another component and we would say props.x. Basically, whenever props.x gets changed, and since this is in the dependency array, this would re-invoke this function every time that this props.x changes. But for now, since all we're doing is fetching data and we're only gonna do it once, we could pass in an empty array. All right, so now let's look at the API that we're gonna be using. And we could take a look at it here. And I'll have a link to this within the description. So don't worry about that. And this is completely free. You don't need to sign up for anything or any keys, anything like that. So what we can do is go to guide and they have a bunch of examples here. And what we want to do is get a list of objects. So for this, we're going to use this endpoint. So we're just going to copy this. So we're just going to copy this and we'll go within our use effect hook. Let's go ahead and paste this. And instead of JSON, I'll just call this data. And for now, all we'll do is print out the data. Okay, so if I save this and let's take a look at it in the browser, go to our component, hit F12, and you see that we have an array of 100 objects. Okay, so each of these objects have a body, an ID, title, user ID. Okay, so that's fine. So now what we wanna do is we wanna set the state instead of just printing this out. So what we can do is just say set data and pass in this data. Okay, so just a quick reminder, if you never work with the fetch API, you give it an endpoint like we're doing here. So this line of code is gonna return a promise. Once you get back this promise, you could chain it by calling the then method. So that's gonna execute this promise. We're gonna get back a response from the server. We're gonna return response.json. This is also gonna return a promise and response.json is just gonna convert json into a javascript object for us so we call then on that because that's a promise and what we end up getting is the javascript object back and what we're doing is just updating the state so actually before we just update the state like this i don't want to handle an array with 100 elements so i'm just gonna copy the first 10 elements so we're just gonna call data.splice 
and we're going to copy the first 10 elements. So we'll go from zero to 10. Okay. So once we set our data, what we can do is let's go ahead and display this data. So let's go ahead and create an unordered list. And what we can do is map over our array. So we could say data.map. We'll get back an item. And we're just going to return an list item. So we'll pass key as an item.id. And we are just going to output the body. So it'll be item.body. So if I go ahead and save this, take a look at it in the browser. And you see that we get our output. So this should be displaying 10 elements. So yeah, that looks like 10. So again, all I did was just copy over the first 10 elements because I didn't want to display the full 100. So now let's say that I don't want to write our request like this. So for example, we'll comment this out and let's say I want to use async and await. So the first thing you might be thinking is, can't I just say, instead of just passing a function like this, can I just write async like this? And the answer to that is no. So uh, let's actually save this, take a look in the browser and see what kind of error we get. So let me just make some more space. It says an effect function must not return anything besides a function when it's used for cleanup. And it's basically complaining, hey, you're passing in async and a function like this. And it's basically telling you that instead of writing it like that, declare a asynchronous function within this function that we pass in and then invoke it. So what we are going to do is I am going to declare a anonymous function. First, remove that. So we have our function that we're passing in. We're going to say async and we're going to create this function. And afterwards, all we're going to do is invoke it. So this is an immediately invoked async function. So once we use async, we could use await within this function. So what I can do is I can create a variable called response and I can say await. And let's go ahead and copy this. So we get our response back. After we get our response back, we get our data. So we'll say const data and we'll say response.json and JSON is a promise. So what we could do is use a wait on it. And then once we get our data, we could call set data and we'll say data.splice and we'll copy the first 10 elements. So now if I save this, we should get the same exact result. So if you want to use async and await within a use effect, just make sure to use it within the function that you pass in. So use it like this. So now let's say that this data that we're fetching takes some time to get fetched. So in other words, what I want to do is display something when the data is being fetched, like a loading screen. And when the data is finally set, we'll display the actual data. So what we can do is let's go ahead and create a new state. We'll say is loading. And we'll initialize this state to true, right? So when our component first renders, it's loading. So that's why we set it to true. So now what I can do is within our return is we could do a little conditional rendering. So we could say if is loading is true, what we're going to do is render out a div. And all this is going to say is loading. If it isn't loading, what we're going to do is render out this unordered list that we created. So in other words, we're going to display the data when it becomes available. So let's go ahead and save this, take a look at it in the browser. And right now this is actually pretty good. Since we initialized it to true, 
we've never updated it. So we need to update it. So once we set the data, we can also set is loading to false because the data is loaded already. So let's go ahead and save this, take a look at it in the browser. And there you go. So if I hit refresh, uh, you could kind of see it, but let's say that uh, to simulate this even more, let's say that this data takes three seconds to load. So what we can do is we could use a set timeout here. And we'll pass in 3000 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and copy this. Paste this in here. Go ahead and save it. And we should get the desired output. So that's just in case if you want to display like a loading screen, if your uh, data takes a while to fetch. So that's how you could go about doing that. Well, this is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one.